This is the Dacia Sandero Stepway and it's essentially a normal Sandero that's a little bit taller and for some people that will make it a better choice for a number of reasons. Firstly, there's the looks. It gets some fashionable urban accoutrements such as roof bars, rubbing strips and beefier bumpers. But the best bit is the Sandero's boxy body doesn't look quite so boring when sat on jacked up suspension. Being taller than the normal Sandero makes it easier to lift things into the stepway's boot and it means the large boot lip is less of an issue as well. Actually, the boot itself is the same size as the normal car and it's decent for this class of vehicle. So to interior cubby spaces, and we'll show you those now, the time efficient montage. There's another benefit to the raised ride height too. It makes it easy for parents when dealing with baby seats, while your elderly relatives will find it less of a struggle to clamber into the back. Seeing as the stepway has the exact same body as the normal Sandero, you've got the exact same reasonable knee room, excellent headroom, large footwells and seats that are raised up so you can slide your feet underneath them to stretch out a bit more. And you've got large rear windows to get a good view out and kids will like that. As soon as you start driving the Sandero stepway, you notice the raised suspension combined with the chunkier tyres gives you some other benefits too. The first is an even softer ride and that means the car's better than the normal Sandero dealing with things like bumps, rough surfaces, potholes and speed humps. Also, you get that raised driving position, which gives you a slightly better view ahead. And actually, overall, the, the visibility is very good in this car. And, you know, that helps when you're manoeuvring in town traffic or trying to squeeze into parking spaces. You know, well, I think overall, this car is pretty good as a city run around. You can get the Sandero Step 8 with two engines. There's a nippy 900cc three-cylinder turbo petrol, which does 52 miles per gallon. For those who do more motorway work, there's a 1.5 litre diesel which can return 70 miles per gallon and feels quick enough once you're up to speed. The only problem with the diesel is that it highlights that this is quite a cheap car. For instance, it's a rattly engine and all the noise enters the cabin because they've, well, Dacia have obviously saved money by not fitting that much sound insulation. It also vibrates quite a lot with a diesel engine. You can feel the, the, the pedals pulsing beneath your feet and the the, the steering wheel shakes and it's, it vibrates really badly when you're actually at a standstill waiting in traffic and you have to let go of the wheel, otherwise you, your hands start to get numb. Another thing that sounds really cheap is the gear shift. I mean, just have a listen to the clunky noise it makes. That's, that's not very really nice, is it? But then this car is more concerned with getting you from A to B rather than making you feel particularly good about the way you do it. And this is evident in the way this car handles, making sure it will go where you point it and there is sufficient grip. But there's absolutely no fun to be had because the steering's all woolly and the cornering, well, it's a bit... <laughs> a little bit roly-poly. It's the same story with the cabin, which is more about function than form. Everything is well laid out, but all the plastics just feel cheap to the touch, while the design is absolutely devoid of any style whatsoever. One thing that really annoys me is that you don't get reach adjustment for the steering wheel, just height, and I mean, look at the way that drops down. <laughs> it's clear that everything in here has been built down to a price. And that includes the seats as well, because they're just, well, they haven't really got much support. This theme permeates throughout the entire car, and that's why there's no opening button on the tailgate. You have to use the key. The catch inside looks homemade. The carpet in the boot has exposed staples, and you don't get rear seats which fold completely flat like you do in a far posher Peugeot 2008. They can forgive all that when you consider just how much this car undercuts its rivals by. What you might not be able to forgive is the fact that you can't get the super cheap Axis version that you can with a normal Sandero in the case of the stepway. And really, if you want air conditioning, which of course you do, unless you live in the Arctic or back in the 1980s or something, you're going to have to go for the range topping Laureate model. And it's a bit more expensive. Even then though, the Sandero stepway is still a bit of a bargain. And you can check out the exact prices at carbuyer.co.uk. 
Big question these days, would you be better off in the long run by spending a bit extra and going for one of its rivals, such as the Peugeot 2008 or the Renault Capture, which you can check our reviews of by clicking here or here. Now, if you click down here, you can watch our very latest video review. If you click on our logo, you can subscribe to the Car Buyer YouTube channel.